Hi, it's Caribou Lou. And join us. And I got gold fever. No rock and rollin' girl and fellow stuff can cure the gold fever. Nothing can help you but the yellow stuff. What can stop that itching name? Around the kitchen, gold, gold, look at my Susanna, go ahead and cry. Hello everyone, I'm Prospector Eli, and on today's show we're going to be showing you a step-by-step -step process on how to make a gold button. We've located a gold-bearing quartz vein out here in southern Arizona. So we're going to be extracting it, crushing it, smelting it, melting it, showing you how it's done. Here's a picture of a few of the veins. Notice the heavy mineralization in the ore itself. Look for staining, reds, blacks, yellows, greens, blues, those are all colors you're going to want to associate gold with. You're going to want to stay away from the bull quartz, that's the white quartz. Anything that's pure white is not going to be really associated with gold too much. That's not saying that gold's not going to be in it though, because there is occasions where gold is in it. <clears throat> if you notice the reds on it, that's limonite, that's heavy ironstone, that's rotted away, that's um, oxidized. So the first step after you get it out of the cave itself, you're going to want to crush it through a jaw crusher. This is going to minus it down to half an inch. We like to classify our material after we crush it through the first stage. This just gets rid of all the fines. Second stage would be the hammer mill. This is chains that are wrapped around a basically a shaft, spins around at high revolutions and it crushes the rock, pulverizes it, turns it to powder. That's what you're gonna be wanna running. Now we run our stuff through a shaker table. There's a few different other things we use to run it, um, but this seems to be the most effective way at catching the very finest of the gold. This table runs off of basically gravity and water. It's a very effective way to catch gold. Here's some of the gold that we've caught with it. Now the next step would be to add the concentrates from the shaker table to the mercury. And then we're going to add it to a tumbler. Screw the cap on, duh. Put it on the tumbler. We tumble it for a few hours. We do about three or four hours just to make sure we've caught it all. The next step would be to pan it out. So we do the same thing as we would do as regular panning. Mercury stick to the ball, it's an alchemy ball is what it's called at this point. Gold has an affinity for mercury. Mercury has an affinity for gold. It also has an affinity for copper and silver. So anything that it touches with those elements will stick right to it. So there's the ball right there. We're going to put it in what is called a retort system. That's going to distill the mercury and we're going to be able to catch the mercury and reuse it. We're going to add ice water to the cooling chamber of the retort system. Put the cap on, duh. 
we're going to put a torch to it. The torch is going to heat up the alchemy ball. It's going to distill the mercury vapors. The vapors are going to condense the other end and form into back into the liquid state. And we're going to catch it in the pan. So now we're getting the torch going. It's going to take about 15-20 minutes. After it's all done and cooled down, you'll be able to see the mercury ball that's condensed into the water chamber that we got it catching in. We'll be able to reuse that. And then the other end, where it originally went, should be only gold. Let's see what it looks like. And there we have it. It's spongy looking right now. This is going to be the Kelm system right here. This is a furnace that's going to heat the gold up and uh, melt it into the button itself. It works out for two torches. You're going to want to get it up to heat. This is flux what we're adding to it. This will suck out all the impurities and help heat it up faster. You put about a half a tablespoon to a three quarter of a tablespoon, depends on what you're putting in it. There's the algamy ball we're adding to it now. Once it's up to heat, we add it to it. We offset ours a little, it helps dispute the heat a little bit and um, we can see in it easier. You're going to want to heat your mold up a little to stop it from cracking. Also it's going to help uh, let the gold come off the crucible itself. It's going to be hot, so you're going to want to act fast. Oh, Caribou Lou again. That's the final product. It's a nice little button. You'll be able to sell that one.